Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In the first few videos of our linear algebra series, we've talked about systems of linear equations in general, pivots, echelon forms, elementary operations, row reduction. All of these intro topics lead to this idea of basic variables and free variables, as we think of translating what we know about matrices back into equation form and what those equations might tell us about solutions for a system. Hopefully, you're familiar with the idea that a matrix in echelon form has a pivot column anywhere there's a leading entry, and we want to keep in mind that leading entries are the leftmost non-zero entry in a row of a matrix. We've got a few examples of matrices in echelon form here. In fact, they're all in reduced echelon form. Let's make sure that we're okay translating these augmented matrices back into systems of equations. All of these are 3 by 4 matrices, so if we think of these as augmented matrices, then that means our first three columns in each represent the coefficients of our variables, and the last column represents the constant that they are equal to on the other side of the equation. We've intentionally made the first two rows of each matrix the same here, and we'll see that they can still have very different solutions as a system of equations. If we look at the first row of each matrix, they all have the same statement, which reads that variable x1 is equal to 4, and the second rows all being the same tell us that variable x2 is equal to 7. Let's focus on the subtle differences found in the last rows here. For the matrix on the left, the last row as an equation simply reads that x3 is equal to 0. And so we have x1 is 4, x2 is 7, and x3 equals 0. We get specific numerical values for all variables as our solution, and we would call this the unique solution case. The final row of our matrix in the middle gives us the equation 0 equals 0. This is certainly a true statement, so it seems like a good thing to say, but it doesn't really tell us anything about our final variable x3. So let's put a pin in that for a moment and come back to it. Looking at the last row of our matrix on the right, we get a final equation of 0 equals 1. I think we would definitely all agree that something suspicious is going on with that statement, and it's telling us that something is inconsistent about the information in this system. In fact, whenever the rightmost column in our augmented matrix is a pivot column, we get an inconsistent system, because that pivot will have nothing but zeros before it in the row, and so we'll have a statement that's telling us 0 is equal to some other number that's not 0. Definitely an inconsistent story. In other words, the system has no solution. Now, if our augmented matrix does not have a pivot column in its last column, then our system has at least one solution. It could have one solution. It could have many solutions, but there's at least one, and we call that system consistent. In our first matrix, we have exactly one solution, where x1 is 4, x2 is 7, x3 is 0. In our middle matrix here, we still have that x1 is 4 and x2 is 7. But you'll notice that the last row doesn't give us any conditions about what x3 must be. Since this last row places no restrictions on x3, it can be any real number, and the system of equations will be satisfied. And this is what we refer to as a free variable. So in this middle one, if x3 is a free variable, let's look at the difference in these two on the left. For this first one, we have specific values for each of the variables. Then that's like having all three of the coordinates we need to locate a specific point in 3D space. The point 4, 7, 0. For our other system, if x3 is free and allowed to take on any value, then we have specific values for the first two coordinates, and the last can be anything. So 4, 7, 0 is a solution. 4, 7, 50 is a solution also. We could have 4, 7, negative 1 million as a solution, and so on, right? So we get an infinite number of solutions that work as long as x1 is 4 and x2 is 7. And what we might start to realize is that we will have infinitely many solutions when a system has at least one free variable in it somewhere. The way we tell the difference between a free variable and a non-free variable, any variable that corresponds to a pivot column in our matrix is called a basic variable, and any variable that does not is a free variable. 
When we write the solution for a system, we'll generally state answers for basic variables in terms of the free variables, if we have any free variables. And it will really be simpler to write all of this based on a matrix that's in reduced echelon form. What I'd like to do now is work through a few examples and write out the solutions for these systems, and then we'll also go back and take a look at the very last system from our previous video, the last example in the row reduction algorithm video. So here you notice that all of my matrices that I've got here are three rows and five columns, so they're all three by five. So if we think of these as augmented matrices, then these first four columns are going to be thought of as variable statements on the left side of the equal sign, and this last column will be statements about the constant that those are equal to on the right side. So if I think of this as the x1 column, this is the x2 column, x3 column, x4 column is here, and this is b. If we go through and identify the lead entries, the pivots in this matrix, we have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. So what we notice right away is that there's no pivot here in the x3 column, so we're going to have a free variable here. So we'll go ahead and write down that x3 is free, and then we'll go ahead and go back and read the rest kind of one row at a time. So here, our first row says that 1x1, or just x1, is equal to 12. And our next row says that 1x2 is equal to 11, so x2 is equal to 11. x3 is free, and then our last row here says that x4 is equal to 10. Okay, so if we imagine these as sort of points in four-dimensional space, we know that the first, second, and fourth coordinates all have specific values they have to be, but the third variable is allowed to take on any value. So this is our solution for our system here on the left. If we look at our second system here, we'll notice that we have a lot of similar looking entries to the first one, but there are some differences here. So you'll notice if we go in and label all of our lead entries here, we've got one there in the top corner, we've got one below and to the right there. We have another one here in the X4 column. Uh, this is a one, but it's not a leading one, right? So it's not a lead entry. So again, it looks like X3 is going to be free here. So what we'll go ahead and do is go back through each row now, and so look at this first row. We've got an extra four here. Just be careful. Notice that this says really x1 plus four x3s. That is equal to 12. Our second row here, we've got our leading entry, but we also have another coefficient that is not zero. So we actually have x2 plus x3 is equal to 11. And our last row, uh, really the same as the first one here, just tells us that x4 is 10. So we do still get a specific numerical value for x4. x3 is still free here because there's no lead entry there, no pivot as we think of it. Uh, we have these other statements for x1 and x2 that also contain information about this free variable. So what we're saying is x3 is allowed to be anything. This is going to be an infinite number of solutions kind of a, a system here. Uh, and what we'll need to do is maybe just rearrange these so that the first two variables are stated in terms of this free variable. Okay, so if I go ahead and subtract this 4x3 to the other side, I could say that x1 is equal to 12 minus 4x3, where x3 is a free variable. And for this one here, x2 plus x3, let's move our free variable term over to the other side again. And so really our answer for x2 is that x2 is equal to 11 minus x3. So you can see x3 is allowed to be anything that we want. And then what we choose for x3 will also help to determine what x1 and x2 are in this case. Our choice for x3 does not have any bearing on what x4 is x4 is always the number 10. Okay, so this would be an answer for our system here. Let's take a look at our last one doing a similar thing. We might notice what's going on here. Now we've got this row of all zeros. We also have a column of all zeros here, so let's kind of see what happens here. Let's go in and label our pivots, our lead entries here. We've got one there, we've got one there again. 
notice we don't have any lead entry in the last row, right? So we just have those two. So if we think about what are the columns where we don't have those lead entries, we don't have a pivot in X3 and X4 columns, right? So in this one, X3 is free, but we're also going to have that X4 is also free. So let's go back and look at what's happening for X1 and X2. So the first row tells us that X1 plus 3X3 is equal to 12. We could go ahead and write our basic variable X1 in terms of our free variable. So let's subtract that term over to the other side, and we'll say X1 is equal to 12 minus 3X3. And our second row here We've got this lead one here says x2, look at the negative two here, we've got minus 2x3 is equal to 11. And of course we could go ahead and add this term over to the other side, so we could say that x2 is actually 11 plus 2x3. So we've got statements for x1 and x2 in terms of one of the free variables. Now you'll notice x1 and x2, neither one of them depends on x4. x4 is still allowed to be anything, doesn't matter, it can be any real number because it's a free variable, but it has no bearing on what any of the other variables are going to be because none of them are in terms of x4. So x3 and x4 are both free, but only x3, the choice of that value, will really determine what happens with variables x1 and x2. Let's go back and look at our last example matrix from our previous video. So this is one that we row reduced. This was our example two. If we think of this as an augmented matrix for a system of equations, and we start labeling the columns as variable columns, of course we'll have x1 all the way down through x5, and we'll treat this as an augmented matrix as the constant column for the right-hand side of the equations. So now let's go in and let's find our pivots that we've got. We've got one here, we've got one here, we also have one at the bottom of the x4 column. So you'll notice, as we mentioned at the end of the last video in our series, the x2 and x5 column, no pivots there, right? Definitely no lead entry. So that means that x2 and x5 are going to be free variables. So we have x2 is free in this case. I'm going to leave some space, and we also have that x5 is free. So let's figure out what's going on with these others. If we look at the first row here, think about what this says. This says, I'm going to write it out here, and then we'll write it in. So this says x1 plus x2, and then jumping to x5, is equal to negative 2. This second row here, we have x3 is equal to 5. I think that's safe to put in here, right? So we'll say x3 is equal to 5. We got this at the end of our last video. And then here this says x4 minus 4x5 is equal to 6. So what I want to do is I want to just put those in my list here sort of in order, and then we'll have our solution for our system. So we want to write the basic variable, the one that has a pivot in the column, in terms of our free variables. So you can see our x2 and x5 are our free variables here. So if we want to write this top equation solved for x1 in terms of the free variables, well, we'll have x1 is equal to negative 2 minus x2 minus x5. For our x4, which is our basic variable, solving it in terms of our free variable x5 there, so we'll go ahead and add that term over to the other side, that would say then that x4 is equal to 6 plus 4 times x5. Okay, so you can see that x2 and x5 are allowed to be any real number. You'll notice that x3, our third variable for the solution, is always going to be 5 no matter what. Our fourth variable, x4, it's going to vary depending on what we choose for x5, because we have that free variable in its equation. 
And x1 is actually going to be determined by both what we choose for x2, which is free, and what we choose for x5. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you determine what's basic, what's free in terms of variables, and how to write those solutions for your systems of equations.